In this second video in our series of tutorials on using ForeFlight, delivered by Flight Insight, we're going to take a deep dive into the Maps view, where you'll spend a majority of your time both on the ground in planning and in flight. Let's get started. The Maps view is where new users will start when first opening the app and getting set up. If you're on the free trial of ForeFlight Mobile, you're on ForeFlight's best plan, and the features shown on this tutorial will be available to you. But if you're on a different plan, some of these features may not be available. The charts available to you will also depend on which country you're in or which region is included in your ForeFlight subscription. Let's start with the Map Layer Selector by tapping the Layers icon in the top left of the screen. The left column contains a list of maps and charts that can be swapped out, with the right column containing different layers that can be overlaid directly onto the selected map to enhance awareness. Here, we just have the Aeronautical Layer selected. Current radar is overlaid showing areas of precipitation with type and intensity. We can animate the radar by tapping play to see the last hour or so of returns. Let's overlay the flight category. We see at each METAR station either a green, blue, red, or magenta dot corresponding with VFR, marginal VFR, IFR, and low IFR respectively. Matching up areas of precipitation with IFR METAR reports adds context to our weather picture. The icing overlay shows us the location and intensity of icing based on National Weather Service reports. We can use the slider on the right to select an altitude, and of course we see that icing becomes more widespread and intense at higher altitudes due to colder air. A layer that provides a major enhancement to situational awareness is the traffic overlay. This shows the position and vector of aircraft around us. We're on the ground right now, so the traffic displayed all comes from an internet ADS-B feed and shouldn't be used for navigation. When you're in flight, you can connect your device with an ADS-B in unit such as ForeFlight's Sentry receiver and have a reliable ADS-B display on your moving map. Tapping on any traffic target will pull up more details on the aircraft and show its recent flight path. The maps we have selected from the left column on the layer selector are the aeronautical map and the aerial map, which is a satellite imagery view. If we turn that off, we can look at just ForeFlight's aeronautical map and the base map. We can also toggle what elements to display on this map with the aeronautical drawer, the little slider bar icon on the left side of the screen. We can bring in airports, airspace, waypoints, nav aids, airways, ATC center boundaries, terrain, and major roads. Tapping the settings button at the very bottom lets us customize the map even further, with different map themes and terrain styles, cultural elements, and a whole lot more. Unlike sectional or IFR charts, the aeronautical chart is a highly customizable interactive display. Because it's vector-based instead of scanned in like the FAA's charts, we can zoom in and out and elements adjust for clarity. Watch how these complex Class Bravo airspace shelves only appear as we zoom in. Let's really customize our maps view to make it relevant for the kind of flying we do. I'll start by only leaving the airports on the aeronautical drawer. Then, let's go into map settings by pressing the gear icon at the top of the screen. The auto center mode is on north up, and we'll keep it there, but you could switch to track up if you're so inclined, and the aeronautical map's labels will rotate along with it, which is an advantage over the sectional chart. Try reading that upside down. I like to use extended center lines, which extends and clearly labels the runways of any airport that's included in your route. This is a big aid to helping you visualize arrivals and departures from an airport. At the bottom of the setting menu is the option for multiple selections. What this does is allow you to select multiple items from the layer selector without having to reopen it for each one, letting us more quickly and easily set up our map overlays. Let's bring in the sectional chart and select some other overlays. Just tap on any blank part of the map to close the layer selector when you're done. So of course the biggest benefit of the map view comes during the flight itself. Data-enabled devices can receive GPS position, or you can connect through an external GPS receiver like Sentry and have your position overlaid on the map. With this, your situational awareness can jump to a new level, and we can explore how to incorporate this into flight planning and in-cockpit use. Until then, take some time and get comfortable with bringing in all the features in maps, overlays, and the aeronautical drawer. See you next time!